Hello there folks, welcome back to the Chaps Guide. My name is Ash and of course I'm your host on this journey through men's style, self-development and personal grooming. Now today I'm here to answer some serious questions and to assist some of you who may be suffering with the same problem as the viewer who's written to me uh, and it's Tony. And Tony asked me a very simple question. For me and many other fellas, the budget is tight concerning clothing, accessories and shoes. Considering many males have to prioritise family budgets first, how can you begin to achieve sartorial success on a small budget? Can it be done? If so, what tips and general approaches can be adopted? And of course, Tony makes a very valid point. We live in a very unstable time. Right? There's lots going on in the world, which in recent times has affected um, things like our household fuel costs. Heating our homes in the winter time has never been more expensive than it has been and is going to be in the year ahead. And many people are having to weigh up, you know, should I go out and buy a new suit or should I keep my money safe in the uncertainty that I may have to spend more on my, on my petrol for my car, my diesel? my electricity, my natural gas prices, lots are going on. I absolutely understand that. And actually, when I started this channel three or more years ago now, one of the underlying principles which I started the channel for was to improve men's style, but frugally, because my journey has all been about frugality. And it's not that easy to negotiate the frugal world, but I'm going to try and do so today for you. Okay, let's get started. Now for me, I'm always trying to get the best outcome for the minimum cost. You know, I try to squeeze every penny out of each pound that I spend on my attire because, you know, I'm a family man. I've got the same bills as everybody else. I want to make sure that my money is going in the right place and the more I can save on my style, the absolute better. So let's use footwear as an example, all right, the same principles can be applied to any element of your clothing. And I'll incorporate some of those other tips as well. But let's look at the different ways in which we can squeeze each pound for every spare penny when we're looking at buying footwear. Because, you know, footwear absolutely will be one of the most expensive items in your wardrobe. You know, a decent pair of shoes, good you welted, well-produced shoes should cost about 500 pounds. Let's be honest. You know, of course you can buy much cheaper, but 500 pounds, it could easily be for a pair of Crockett and Jones church shoes, and a lot more than that, actually. But let's start with that. So our first place will be buying them from the retailer. All right, that's the full price. However, I make it a point never ever to pay full price price for a pair of shoes, even from the retailer. Shop around, right? You've got the internet at your fingertips. The, the world is your global market and you can buy from anywhere. There will be a deal on somewhere. So that pair of shoes, which cost £500, and I'm using that merely as an example, it could cost £200 depending on your personal price point. But let's say your £500 pair of shoes, you look online. You can see that there's a retailer in another part of your country which is selling those shoes for 400. They've got a sale on. You've saved 100 pounds just by shopping around. Or hold on to your money and wait until the sales come around. There's going to be a discount somewhere. Wait until they come down 50% or 25% in the new year or the summer sale and strike. Then you will save some money. As long as you've got that wiggle time, you can wait until it's time to pounce. Alternatively, most retailers today offer discounts for certain people, depending on normally your employment or if you're a member of a club or a group. So I'll give you an example. Um, Loke, which is uh, quite a universal, fairly decent footwear brand here in the UK, made in the UK but available everywhere. Um, in this country, I think they still offer a 15% discount if you're serving military or serving law enforcement. Go into the store, ask what discounts are available for any particular group that you're involved with. 15% is money in your pocket 
which can be spent on something else. So don't discount the retailer as an avenue to go to to get some good bargains. Just bide your time, ask for deep discounts and do some shopping around. And of course, I'm using footwear as an example, but the same can be said for any element of your ensemble of clothing. Now, when it comes to the official retailer, there's another thing that you can do too, and I have spoken about it on this channel in the past. I've made a whole video about my journey to the factory stores of Northampton, because footwear manufacturers particularly, they have to have large factories, and they will tend to have a factory store where you'll be able to go to and perhaps, if you're lucky, get exactly the shoe that you want at an incredible discount. Now, on my visit to the factory store in uh, Church, for instance, Church's Shoes, well-regarded, famous British shoes, in their factory store in Northamptonshire, they were selling shoes for 50% at least off their full retail price. Um, and the same can be said of any shoe manufacturer. So depending on where you live in the world, of course, you know, if you've got ready access to these factory stores, it's an option. If not, drop them a line, ring them up, send them an email, ask them, do they mail out from their factory store? If you tell them exactly what you want and they've got one in stock, you might be lucky, they might stick it in the post to you and you're gonna save a bit of money. If you live a long way from the factory store, wait until you're passing, and then you might be able to make a absolute killing on the discount. Um, I featured a video a little while ago about dent gloves, right? There's a factory store maybe 50 miles from my home. They were selling the most amazing peccary leather gloves for about 25% of their full retail price. Perfect if you're nearby and you can avail yourself of that fantastic offer. And don't forget outlet stores as well, right? Not quite the factory store, but a, a middle ground. Because a few years ago, I bought a pair of Clark's Original Desert Boots. They retail in the UK for about 100 British pounds. I went to an outlet store where they had, uh, an outlet sort of village where they had stores from different manufacturers. I bought my Desert Boots there for 40 pounds, 60% off the full retail price. Boots are perfect, nothing wrong with them at all. They've just been liquidated via a factory outlet. So, don't discount all those other routes. But there are more routes you can turn to. Now you know where we're heading. We're heading towards pre-owned. But, at the very top of the pre-owned world, there are the consignment stores, or the more professional pre-owned stores when it comes to shoes particularly. Now, I recently bought uh, a pair of Chini chukka boots in suede. Um, they cost me, I think it was 115 pounds from Abbott's Shoes. Now, Abbott's Shoes are like a consignment, high-level pre-owned shoe website here in the UK. I believe they ship all over the world. Um, I'm not in any way endorsed or sponsored by them. I'm merely a customer. And I went onto their site, and I saw a fantastic pair of ever so lightly worn chukka boots, which I really like the look of. I bought them for 115 pounds and they were delivered to me. The same pair of boots were on the Chini website for 350 pounds. But because these had been purchased by somebody else, and I could tell by looking at the sales images, the soles, leather soles, were only ever so lightly worn just barely scuffed. I knew they'd been barely worn at all. It was as if I bought a brand new pair of shoes and I was more than happy with 115 pounds because I saved way over 200 plus pounds in the potential purchase price of those shoes. So before we step down the path into full pre-owned, don't forget there are other routes to the pre-owned world which means ever so slightly worn. You'll pay a bit more for them but have a look at those consignment sites and the high-end pre-owned world because you're effectively getting a brand new shoe at a pre-owned price. Well worth looking into. Now, as we head down in the pre-owned world, there's one place where everybody goes, isn't there? eBay or the auction sites, whichever you use. I know there's not just eBay, there's others as well, but eBay has certainly been a route which I've gone time and time and time again because I have 
I have to say, an embarrassingly large collection of men's dress shoes, simply because I've been able to buy those shoes so cheaply from eBay. And I'm talking about shoes from Crockett and Jones, Cheney, Church, Grenson, and all of the other top-end brands, certainly Loke, in their thousands on those sites. And they can be achieved for pocket change. They really, really can. I have bought shoes which have been immaculate for just a few pounds because it's an auction. And if you're lucky, if you catch the right pair of shoes at the right time, nobody else is bidding or they've been overlooked or they've been poorly um, described in the auction note. And if you know what you're looking at, you can get in there and absolutely save a fortune. Uh, and I've made some amazing purchases over the years. I've featured many on the videos that I've made on this channel about you know polishing them and doing them up. I'll drop some of the links to those shoes that I've bought in the past um, in the show notes below. But I've made some amazing steals. And on that topic, don't forget the time-old art of arbitrage. All right, so or you know, buying and selling on for a profit, shall we say, in simple terms. You might see a pair of shoes. You might not be in the market for a pair of black cap toe Oxfords, but you see a pair on there which are immaculate, in great condition, but they've been perhaps poorly described or badly photographed. And as a result, few people are bidding on it. But you recognize them for what they are, a great pair of shoes in the raw. You buy them. I've bought shoes like that for a pound, all right, because nobody has bid, I've been the only bidder, and I've bought them for a pound, or five pounds, or ten pounds. And I know full well that shoe, or that pair of shoes, is worth 50 or 100 pounds. So I've bought them. Might not even be in my size. But I've bought them, I've got them home, I've given them a good polish, I've brought them up to a mirror shine. I've invested an hour of my time into them. Then I've photographed them in great natural light, looking fantastic. I've then described them fully, accurately, and in a way which makes them far more attractive than they were originally. Then you sell those shoes for a profit, you take that money, and you roll it back into that process of arbitrage again. You buy another pair at a higher price, and you do the same thing. You buy them, make them look pretty, sell them for a higher price. That's how the game of arbitrage works. I used to call it laddering, climbing the ladder of shoes. And you can go from a pound to a pair of, you know, 200 pounds teeny shoes in three or four steps if you're lucky. Might take you more, might take you less, but it's a bit of sport as well, and it barely costs you any money at all. So don't ever overlook the auction sites. There are some little treasure troves in there waiting to be discovered. Now, finally, in the pre-owned world, there's one last stop which I'm going to talk about, and that's the charity shops or thrift shops, whatever you call them, wherever you are in the world. And I have to say, for me, it's the least enjoyable experience of trying to track down a pair of shoes at a very reasonable price, but it still remains a valid place to go. And in fact, to be honest, I think the cheap shoe market is no longer active in the charity thrift stores, certainly here in the UK, because the charities themselves have become more adept at spotting high value products and they won't put them out for sale in the stores. They'll sell them on their eBay sites and they'll make a lot more money. What you will find, stepping away from footwear for a moment in those charity stores, are great buys when it comes to clothing. Now, I recently had an excellent purchase and I've done so many times the same. I was in a, a well-heeled town in Gloucestershire in England and well-regarded place quite near to Highgrove, which is the um, private home of Prince Charles, the Prince of Wales. And I was in one of the charity stores in that town and I walked in and I looked at the rack of men's shirts, as I often do, and I was amazed. There were shirts in that rack. There must have been 10 shirts from Turnbull and Asser, um, Harvey and Hudson, and Gives and Hawks, right? So some of the best shirt manufacturers in the world from central London, from Savile Row and German Street. And I glanced through the shirts, I picked one up, a white 
Turnbull and Asser shirts in immaculate condition, Sea Island cotton. All day long, it's a 200, 250 pound shirt if I'd walked into Turnbull and Asser and bought it off the rack. Do you know how much I paid for that shirt in great condition? Five pounds, five British pounds. I brought it home, I ran it through the washing machine, I ironed it, it's perfect. So now I'm wearing around a Turnbull and Asser shirt that I paid a fiver for. What a deal. Yes, that doesn't happen every day. You've got to be lucky, all right? Somebody's brought a batch of good shirts in there, happened to be in my size. The one which took my eye was just a pure white shirt. I wanted a new pure white shirt. Believe me, I don't need shirts. I must have got 50 or 60 in the wardrobe, but I'm never going to turn down a Turnbull and Asher shirt for five pounds, I assure you. But it just goes to show there are some little treasures still to be found in the stores out there. Don't turn your nose up, all right? I know what you're thinking. I would never wear a second-hand or pre-owned shirt. That's what you're thinking? I'd rather not do that. Gentlemen, you're overlooking a fabulous opportunity because that shirt, it's made of cotton, all right? Once you've run it through the washing machine, it's as new, all right? There's no um, vestiges left over of the previous owner. It's all you, it's cotton. It's a natural substance. Once it's washed, it's got your uh, scent on it, your, your, you know, your DNA on it. It becomes yours. Don't turn your nose up at the potential bargains if you're trying to save money. Now, if money's no option, I can't blame you. You know, I'd go to Turnbull and Asa and I'd buy, you know, a full price shirt, brand new. But we're talking about being frugal today and you can still dress in the best shirts in the world for only five pounds, if you get lucky. And that was just last week when I bought that shirt. It happens every day, but you've got to get on the hunt. You've got to go and find them, and you certainly will. Now, if you feel a little bit uneasy about buying and wearing pre-owned items, remember, it is the ultimate form of sustainability, all right? Because you're buying items which would perhaps have been thrown away and you're giving them a new lease of life. You're giving yourself the opportunity to look your very finest for a fraction of the price. And for me personally, all right, I would rather pay 50 pounds for a really good pair of pre-owned shoes, which let's be honest, for 50 pounds, you would probably get a pair of shoes from, you know, Cheney, um, Sanders, um, you know, Church or any of the other manufacturers, Loke and so on, Allen Edmonds. For 50 pounds, you can get an excellent pair of pre-owned shoes from those brands. I would rather do that than pay 50 pounds for a cheap pair of 50 pound shoes. Because brand new 50 pound shoes, they're not gonna last very long. They're not gonna look great. They're not gonna be repairable if something goes wrong with them because they're not gonna be good you welted. They're probably gonna be stuck together with glue or solvents and you know, once the sole separates from the upper, which will happen after 12 to 24 months. If you're lucky, you'll have to throw them away. If you've bought a good pair of pre-owned shoes, which are good you welted, which are solidly constructed, which have been ethically manufactured as well, in good quality leather, they can be repaired. You can have them resold. You can have them patched. They are likely to last 10 years. Whereas your cheap 50 pound shoes, they're just gonna end up in the landfill. So actually, one could argue the point that if you've got only a small amount of money to spend, you can't afford to buy cheap. The best way to spend your money is on better quality because it will last longer, it will look better, it will perform better, and when that's the case, when you look better and you know you look good, your confidence is going to be improved too. You know that you know, you're wearing better quality things. Nobody else in the world is going to know that somebody else owned those shoes before you. All they see is a great pair of shoes that have been well looked after and shined up. So why worry about it? And just to round off the frugality argument here today, I just want to remind you that not everything has to be the best to be good. 
all right? I frequently buy very inexpensive items and I mix and match them with the other items of my clothing. So if I'm wearing a really great pair of shoes, I know that's what's gonna draw the eye, right? So I often, almost certainly, wear quite cheap chinos or khaki trousers. I tend to be wear my chinos from uh, The Gap, where I never pay more than sort of 20 or 25 pounds for those trousers, because I know they fit me rather well, they're quite long lasting, and they look smart enough. And when they're next to a great pair of shoes, that's what people are gonna look at. They're not gonna look at the attention to detail on the trouser, because their eye is drawn to the shoe. When it comes to, you know, anything else, the tie, for instance, I'm wearing a Turnbull and Asa tie right now. I paid eight pounds for it from eBay. All right, it doesn't have to be expensive or expensively sourced. My shirts, whilst I've got a lot of Turnbull and Asa shirts in my collection, which I've bought from eBay, I've also got an equal number of shirts which I've bought from Costco because they're Kirkland brand shirts. They're made of great quality cotton that last for years and years, and they look really good, and they fit my body type quite well. So as you go through life, you will find brands which you know you can bring into your collection and they're gonna look good, particularly if you mix and match with nice items which up their level, which you know bring them up to a higher standard. Nobody's gonna know. So there we go, folks. I hope this discussion today on you know dressing well but frugally will be fruitful to you in the future. It certainly has been a success for me over the years. I dress well, I don't spend a lot of money. It can be done. So if you have enjoyed the video, don't forget, you can help me out by giving the video a thumbs up. If you like the content, click the red button, come on the journey as a subscriber. If you'd like to tell me your tips on dressing frugally, leave me a comment in the comment section below. And if you'd like to practically support the channel, of course, you can buy me a coffee. And if you go to the show notes below, you will find the link to our Buy Me A Coffee page. I'd be overjoyed if you could help us. So until the next time, dress well, dress frugally. It can easily be achieved. Until the next time, take care, and I will see you again very soon.